J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Johnny Green and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Don't Say a Word, Just Dance. influences in our lives, I think, is color. Black and white is fine for an etching, but we all need bright colors to keep our spirits up. When it comes to colors, that's where Jell-O shines. It's the liveliest, gayest dessert you can find. Sunshiny orange, shimmering green, the deep, rich tones of rose and crimson, six different colors from which to choose, everyone lovely, clear, and glowing. And when it comes to taste, ah, that's where Jell-O shines again. For it's packed, crammed full of delicious, real fruit flavor. Flavor as truly luscious as the fresh, ripe fruit itself. No other gelatin dessert can equal Jell-O's extra-rich flavor. So don't accept any substitutes. Insist on the one and only genuine Jell-O. Anyway, I say hello again to Jack Benny. You don't mind if I make a little suggestion tonight, do you? You know, no. after all, I've known you a long time, and I don't think you should be offended. No, no, go right ahead, Don. Uh, pay no attention to my doubled-up fist. Or anything. What is it? <laughs> well, uh, you've been saying jello again so often that it's getting just a bit monotonous. Now, can't we make some kind of a change in this program? I don't know what you mean, Don. How? Well, uh, why don't you introduce me? You take the commercial and give me the opening build-up. Oh, that's awfully silly. <laughs> well, it, uh, it can't be any worse than it has been, so uh, why, not, uh, why not try it out? You know, I'll take your lines and you take mine. All right, Dom, but you'll see. Every man to his own racket. Hey, Green, uh, take the finish of your first number again. Okay. <laughs> hmm, that was Johnny Green playing the Lost Chord. <laughs> And now we bring to you our master of ceremonies, that stage and screen star, Jack Benny. Hello again. This is Jack Benny, the funny man of this program. Yeah. <laughs> how am I doing? Fine, Don. That's a great idea. Now, I'll take your part. Right. Uh, tell me, Jack, how did you do at the Stanley Theater in Pittsburgh last week? Well, I'll tell you, Don, I had a wonderful week. My jokes killed them, and when I finished my violin solo, the audience cheered. Well, Jack, the way you played Love and Bloom, they should jeer at the finish, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, one day we turned away 5,000 people. Say, this is a cute idea, isn't it? Switching parts. Oh, yeah. Come in. Well, well, if it isn't Kenny Baker. How are you, Kenny? I'm Mary. You're playing Kenny's part tonight. Oh. Uh, how are you, Kenny? Gee, it's a thrill. <laughs> Well, Kenny, I see you finally bought yourself a suit of Eastern clothes. Yes, I got two pair of pants with it. Hey, those jokes don't fit you, Mary. <laughs> no, but the pants do. Say, uh, Kenny. Uh, yes, Jack. Uh, how do you like New York now? 
great. I went to six, uh, see the six-day bicycle race last week. Even Kenny must go <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> well, you went to see the six-day bicycle race. Uh, who won it? I don't know. I only stayed five days. And speaking of the six-day race, let me tell you about Jell-O with its six delicious flavor. Not yet, not yet, Don. Not oh, yet, oh, pardon me, I think. Well, see you later, fellas. I've got a date. Look out of the window. Okay, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Has the program started yet? <laughs> well, if it isn't Mary Livingston. <laughs> Might be a good idea, but Mary needs a shave. Thank you. Oh, uh, Mary, here's Don Wilson. Hello, Mary. Hello, Tut. Want to hear a poem I wrote, Don? No. All right, then. Maybe Jack will listen. Here it is. It's entitled Spring. Mm. Spring is nearly here. Oh, spring is nearly here. Birdies singing everywhere. <laughs> People changing underwear. So have a care. Oh, have a care. Because spring is nearly here. How's that, Kenny? One of us is rotten. <laughs> and speaking of spring, why not spring over to your nearest grocer and ask for the big red not letters yet, on not the box? Yet, please. Oh, oh. Well, oh, Jack, after all, people are dying to know what program this is. Now you know how it feels to be interrupted, you mug. I realize it, huh? Well, anyway, tonight, folks. Uh, see who's at the door, Kenny. Uh, come in. Hello, boy. Sorry I'm a little late tonight. Well, well, Johnny Green. <laughs> How are you? Great. I've got a lot of swell numbers, Jack. I, I mean, Don. Hey, wait a minute. That isn't me. I lead the orchestra here, and I won't stand for this. But, Johnny, we're just changing the program around just for a novelty. You get tired doing the same thing every week. Well, in that case, go ahead. You keep out of this, Wilson. Well, I didn't say anything. Who said you did? Then what are you talking about? Say, who started this anyhow? Toscanini over there. He thinks he's Johnny Green. Oh, that guy. Play, Jack. Wasn't Toscanini playing We Saw the Sea from the motion picture Follow the Fleet. And now, folks, we are going back to our original characters, and tonight we are going to offer something instructive. This is the week when you pay your income tax. When you walk right up to Uncle Sam and say, Here, buddy, my dime is your dime. <laughs> now, I know that many of you listeners are a little confused with the blanks you have to fill out, so we will try to help you. That's the least we can do. And now we take you to the income tax office, which is not unlike a bank, only the paying teller is missing. <laughs> All right, music, John. Hmm, have 
happy days are here again. Miss Livingston, uh, uh, what are the collections here so far? Uh, let me see. Uh, $79.20. Hmm, that's $280 behind last year. I know what the trouble is. This office looks terrible. How do you expect people to come in and pay their tax in a dump like this? Put some flowers on my desk. Dust off that picture of George Washington and bring in a few easy chairs. Make the customers want to come in here. That's it. Maybe now we'll do some business. Good morning. I'd like to pay my income tax. What did I tell you, Miss Livingston? Well, sir, this is the place. Uh, what's your name? Johnny Green. Occupation? Orchestra leader. Mm-hmm. Were you born in this country? No, what orchestra leader was? <laughs> now, Mr. Green, what was your gross income for 1935? $325,842.09. I see. And what was your net? $12. <laughs> I, uh, I suppose you took everything off that you're entitled to? Everything but my shirt. Oh. And it won't be long now. Did you have any bad investments last year, Mr. Green? Yes, I bet on Max Fair to beat Joe Lewis. Hmm. Any dependents? Max Fair. <laughs> Oh, uh, Miss Livingston, uh, what does he owe us so far? Eighty-five cents. Oh, fine. I'll pay it. Uh, just a minute now. Are you married? You know, you're allowed $2,500 for a wife. If I had one, I'd sell. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, here's your 85 cents. Oh, it's such a small amount, I'll toss you. Double or nothing. All right. Head. Tails, you lose. Well, it isn't the first time the government took it on the chin. <laughs> Goodbye. So long. <laughs> nice fellow, wasn't he, Miss Livingston? Come in. Hello, hello, hello. Now, how do you do, sir? Uh, excuse me, please. I'd like to pay my income tax. Well, you couldn't find a better place. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Giuseppe Antonio Paramagino. How do you spell that? You know spell. You just put them down. <laughs> uh, how much are you, Mr. Washington, in this uh, what, uh, what business are you in? I'm a six-day bicycle rider. A six-day bicycle rider, Miss Livingston. I'll just put down a peddler. <laughs> Are you married? Yes. Uh, how many children have you got? Uh, how many flavors you got? Six. That's what I got children. <laughs> Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime? No, Tony, Pasquale, Primo, Rosemary, and thanks a million. Well, those are nice, are nice pictures. I mean, uh, what was your total income? Fifteen hundred dollars, three bad checks, and a loan and a cup. Now, what's the O, Mr. Livingston? Let's see. Fifteen hundred divided by six children. Add one loving cup. Uh, how much have you got now? Seven dollars. Isn't that funny? It's just what you owe us. Thank you. Goodbye. Say, wait a minute. You owe us seven dollars. All right. I'm not leaving the country yet. Bobby, mancha molda volanda boy. Well, that's at least a promise. Uh, all right. Who's next? Hmm. <laughs> top row. Well, say, Top Row, you won the Santa Anita Derby. That was $104,000, wasn't it? Yeah! Come on now, don't... Don't deny it. What were your expenses for oats? Ah! I see, I see. Well, you owe us $26,000. Hmm, he wouldn't even wait. Check. Right here, sir. Kenny Baker. Kenny Baker. What's your occupation? A singer. And a comedian at times. Well, <laughs> we're just trying to collect on the singing. Did you uh, file your income tax yet? Did I? I filed it and filed it, and I can't get it all earned. To a big country like me, sing. Uh, how much should we collect, Miss Livingston? Yes. Oh, There may be trouble ahead. But while there's moonlight and music and love and romance, let's face the music and dance before the fiddlers have fled, before they ask us to pay the bill, and while we still have the chance, let's face the and dance. Soon we'll be without the moon, humming a different tune, and then there may be teardrops to share. So why? 
while there's moonlight and music and love and romance. Let's face the music and dance, dance. Let's face the music and Face the Music and Dance from uh, Follow the Fleet, sung by Kenny Baker of California, the state that sent us oranges and now and then a lemon. Well, thanks for calling me an orange, Jack. <laughs> Don't mind him, Kenny. He's always kidding. Oh, I know. It's just a scheme to mention two of our flavors. You're right, Kenny. I'm with you. Oh, well, thanks. It's very sweet of you. Say, what are you doing tonight, Mary? Oh, nothing. Why? Do you like Chinese food? Oh, I love it. Not me. I'm going to a dance tonight. So long. <laughs> mm, three million men in New York, and I'm talking to him. What's the matter, Mary? Oh, nothing. You like Chinese food, Jack? Certainly. Why? Kenny's going to a dance. <laughs> well, what's funny about that? I don't know. They laughed when Kenny said it. <laughs> Say, Kenny... You know, I notice you look kind of sad tonight. What's the, what's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know, Jack. I'm homesick. You know, New York is the loneliest place in the world if you don't know anyone. Why, Kenny, I thought you were having a great time here. All I do is look at tall buildings. Gee, Jack, you're so familiar with New York. I wish you'd show me around. Why, certainly, Kenny. You should have mentioned this before. I didn't know you felt that way. Haven't you been to Greenwich Village or Grant's Tomb or the Central Park Zoo? Oh, the zoo? Gee, I've never been to the zoo. I'd like to see a wild animal. Why, haven't you seen any animals in California? Oh, just the MGM lion. Well, that's too bad. You've just got to see the zoo. I'll take you right now. Come on, Mary, you too, Don. Hey, play something, Johnny, we get back. We're going to the zoo. Let Yourself Go from Follow the Fleet, played by my orchestra with yours truly at the piano. And now I'll tune you into the Central Park Zoo where we find the rest of our gang. having chicken for dinner. <laughs> well, here we are, Kenny. Don't get your arms too near those cages. Oh, gee, this is swell. I never saw so many animals in my life. Say, what are those with the trees growing out of their heads? Not trees, horns. Horns. Those are elk. Oh, gosh, look how they crowd each other. They're fighting to pay their dues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, look, here's the monkey cage. See, aren't they cute? Are they monkeys, Jack? Sure. Phew, they're nice. <laughs> Say, what does that sign mean? Habitat, South Africa. Habitat? Well, that's where they come from, see? Say, isn't it marvelous how they hang by their tails in the sun? 
red tails in the sunset. <laughs> Quiet, Mary. Don't be an animal cracker. <laughs> hey. I waited for that one, huh? Say, Kenny, right around on this side, you'll see some of the oddest animals in the world. Huh? Oh, will you? Gee, I'd like to see an algebra. An algebra? How about some wild arithmetic? <laughs> Gee, what's that? That's Wilson. Oh, a domestic animal? No, commercial. Habitat radio program. Peanuts, popcorn. Get your peanuts and popcorn here. Say, Jack, let's get some peanuts and feed the elephants. Hey, boy, give me a bag. Uh, how much is it? Seven cents. Seven cents for a bag of peanuts? Yeah, there's a two-cent deposit on the bag. <laughs> it's just a little racket I got. Hmm, nice fellow. Now, I think we ought to get someone to show us around and see the place right. Let's call one of the attendants. Yeah. Oh, you with the uniform. Will you show us around? Sure, and that's what I'm here for. We have all kinds of animals. Over there is the hippopotamus. And the fat one is his wife, the hippopotamus. <laughs> Gee, he's got an awful big mouth. Yes, sir. Here's the master of ceremonies around here. But there is giraffe. A giraffe? You have to see if the elevators they ain't running. That's all. We'll see him after the strike is over. It's all right. Have to take this club and beat him over to the back. Hey, what are you hitting that giraffe for? I'm trying to raise make a camel out of him. Hey, uh, Keeper, we want to see some elephants. Where are they? Yeah, we want to feed him some peanuts. Oh, the elephants. Say, say, wait, no. Where are those elephants? That's funny. They were here just a minute ago. I hope you don't think we have them. <laughs> hey, Kenny, you didn't take an elephant, did you? No, Jay. Come on, now. Who's get those elephants? They were right here, no. It's a bunch of crooks that you are, no. <laughs> Oh, oh what well, here they are. It's begging your pardon as I am. Well, the nice elephants, Johnny. Thank you. <laughs> Wilson must have been standing in front of them. Here, Jumbo. Here's some peanuts. Here you are, Toots. <laughs> Gee, he don't want them. Imagine an elephant not wanting peanuts. Uh... Then why not try Jello? It's the most tempting gelatin dessert in the world. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, come on, Kenny. We'll go around and see the birds. Yeah, I like birds. Uh, show them the one you got at Low State Theater last night. <laughs> I mean the one with feathers. <laughs> well, <laughs> here we are. Not so close, Kenny. That's a woodpecker. Oh, well, that's all right. I got my hat on. <laughs> Look at that one, Kenny. That's a stork. You know, the bird that brings the babies. Gee, that one looks all broken down. That's the one that brought the quintuplets. He was retired on a pension. <laughs> oh, say, hey, look at that. Look at that bird over there. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Polly wants a cracker? Polly wants a cracker? She won't talk. Must be Freddie Allen's bird. It even looks like him. Oh, now, Polly wants... Polly wants a cracker. Come on, I'll give you $10 more than Freddie pays you. Come on, Polly wants some jello. Polly wants some strawberry. Polly wants some raspberry. Polly wants some I knew Polly that would get her. Hey, Jack, I want to see some wild animals. All right, Kenny, follow me. I'm sorry, but I'd have to turn you over to another keeper. That's one thing I don't like is wild animals. Okay, thanks. Well, I'm the keeper here. Anything I can do for you? <laughs> don't touch the lions, please. We won't. Say, I got some visitors here from out of town. We'd like to see the different wild animals. I got anything what you want. Look, here's the lion that brought back Spring Buck alive. <laughs> Say something, Leo. I'm glad what I'm knowing you. <laughs> How do you like that, Kelly? Great, Jack, but I'd like to see some raccoons. Say, hey, Keeper, have you got any, uh... <laughs> Keeper, have you got any raccoons? Yes, sir, I could show you something very nice. Here, try this on. And if you like it, I'll take out the animal. <laughs> no, I don't like raccoon on Kenny. Makes him look too collegious. Thank you. Have you got something in Tiger? No, but I got something else in a stripe. Here, feel this fish good. Hey, what is this, a zoo or a clothing store? That's up to you. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Benny, for you, I got a nice piece of porcupine with the skin you love to touch. Porcupine? How much is it? The pork you can have for nothing, but you'll have to have to charge you for the pine. <laughs> Say, listen, Benny Rubin, don't you think we're overdoing this? It's your program, but it's my animals. Say, if you'd like to see something more, come this way. Oh, wait a minute. I'd like to see something in mink. Mm, I'll have you meet my wife. What cage is she in? Mary, quiet. <laughs> Jack, ask him if he's got any wild pigs. Well, in this case, I'll have to turn you over to the other keeper. <laughs> well, here are the pigs now, and right in the next cage are 16 of the finest monkeys you've ever seen. 
Oh, and believe me, those little devils can do everything but speak. They can. You're sad. Hey, hey, come on, let me out of here. Hey, who's that big one in front? That's the head monkey. He's not used to the cage yet. Jack, Jack, don't they look like Johnny Green and his boys? Gee, this is the best I've seen yet. Hey, listen, I've been insulted enough on this program. Come on, open up this cage. I better leave before he's getting out. Hey, let me out of here. Let me out of here. Can't you tell me from a monkey? I'll be darned if I can. You'll have to prove it. Play, John. As a kid, I looked forward all week long to Sunday night supper. I was allowed to ask in a few pals, and my mother always had some swell surprise for us. Well, I still think there's something gay and informal about Sunday night supper for everybody, growing ups and youngsters alike. So here's a suggestion for next Sunday that will make uh, it a special occasion. Sunday night pudding, it's called, and you make it like this. Dissolve a package of strawberry jello in warm water, chill until slightly thickened, then add half a cup of chopped walnut meats and one cup of chopped dates and a chill firm. Served with whipped cream, you have a great dessert because strawberry jello is as delicious as real ripe or to use genuine jello. Look for those big red...